Hi guys, Jeff Clark, Sources Apprentice. I haven't been doing very many videos lately because I've been disciplining myself to work on listing all my unlisted inventory. I'm planning on moving my office in a couple months and I want to make that as painless as possible. But of course, sourcing is the fun part, right? So yesterday there was an auction here in my little town that I went to and I want to show what I got. Okay, if you've never been to an auction, they do something called box lots, and it's where they throw a bunch of junk into a box and just auction a whole box because they don't believe they're going to be able to sell the individual, the individual pieces, and most of the time, they are right. So, I got a couple boxes of books here. Nathan Bailey was talking um, not too long ago about getting some big Bibles and doing really well with those. He said, the bigger the better. So, I saw that big fat sucker and thought, that ought to do well. Got some family genealogy books. Um, narrow niche there. You know, only people that are related to Holdemans would be interested in those books. But you get a narrow niche and you can usually make some good money. Um, this looked pretty cool. Cokesbury Game Book. I haven't looked that up. But, um, you know, I only paid a couple bucks for um, each box. So, no big deal there, right? Um, even if they don't go. So, this box here is mostly junk, right? Except for... The Space Maker can opener. Man, these under the counter Space Makers, those always do well. Even used, um, those are selling on eBay for 25, 30 bucks. Again, $2 for the box. Uh, another couple bucks for this box because new in package ink cartridge that'll sell quickly on eBay for 15 bucks. I don't know about those phone bases, haven't looked those up, but even if they go in the trash, I'm happy with the cartridge. Um, aluminum teapot, that'll sell well. Enamel pot, those will both bring me about 15, 20 bucks. I like this aluminum pressure cooker. Um, it's branded Wagner, I think. Uh, no, wherever, wherever. That's another um, good aluminum kitchen brand. That'll bring me probably 20 bucks. Um, I like the vintage color there of the uh, electric skillet. Didn't look that up. And that one warmer too, that's real 70s looking. Um, all that vintage stuff, man, that stuff does really well. This is an interesting lot. This toaster uh, has an old sunbeam. That'll bring me about 30 bucks. Uh, this thing, heated baby dish? Yeah, I don't know. Um, that should bring up another 15, 20 bucks. And also then there's this vintage uh, paper cutter, paper store and cutter, aluminum foil, wax paper. That's pretty cool. That should bring me another 20 bucks. This box back here I got for $2, and there are two Norelco Dialabrew. You see that cool pot there? There's two of those. Um, lots of sold listings on eBay, right around $30 for those. Plus, this cool Hoover aluminum coffee pot. That'll bring me another probably $20, $25. Bucks. And look at this. Oh, come on now. It's a Hoover can opener. Doesn't that have a cool retro design? That should bring me another $35, $40. Bucks. So not bad for a $2 purchase, right? All right, let's move on to kitchen stuff since we're talking about it. Here's another paper cutter. This one isn't quite as cool as the chrome one, but I still should be able to sell that. More aluminum wear here. This is a Wagner. I should get 20 bucks for that. That's Revere with the copper bottom. Those always sell pretty well, and it's not in great condition, so it won't bring as much as I thought. Uh, Pampered Chef. I'm always looking for Pampered Chef because it sells quickly on Amazon and for good money. Um, only paid a dollar for this, but when I open it up, they're actually used and washed. Yuck. So that will go to the trash. Osterizer Blender. I love these old blenders with the vintage colors. Um, this one is really interesting because sold listings for the blender itself are uh, very low money, but there's sold listing for just the pitcher for 20 bucks. So, I don't know, I may uh, divide this up and part it out, kind of like Matt Pinkwalk does. You know, he does really well with that kind of stuff. Here's another old vintage toaster. This one is really pretty, and it's in the box. No, it's not new, it's used, but you know, the box will help sell it does not have a pretty design. I should be able to get a good 30, 35 bucks for that. Oh look, it's another Norelco dial brew That makes three of those. One of them, sadly, has a broken pot. So I may just be able to sell the base and some of the parts there too. But that one is in really, really good condition. Only paid a couple bucks for that. Another Oster blender in box, also used. That should bring about 15, 20 bucks. Rival Croc Grill in box, also used. Um, lots of sold listings on eBay for those, around 25, 30 bucks. Pretty cool. These two fans are so cool, aren't they? I paid five bucks for the pair. That GE, that'll bring me about 30 bucks. And the Lejeune here, that'll bring me 20, 25 bucks. Okay, always looking at VCRs, electronics and stuff. Only paid two dollars for this stack right here. When I look them up, this is an MGA, that's Mitsubishi. Uh, sold listings, none. Completed listings, even down to the price of five bucks, they still will not sell. And this RCA uh, receiver here, also uh, completed listing, ended listings with no sale. Okay, no big deal, I've got remotes, I'll look up the remotes. 
The remotes don't sell either. This whole stack here is junk, all right? But what's my investment? Two bucks, big deal. I throw it in the trash or I throw it in Goodwill and move on. That's one of the most valuable lessons that I can teach you guys, okay? Here, let me talk to you for a minute. I don't care how long you've been doing this business. I don't care how many millions of dollars you make online. You are going to make bad decisions from time to time. It happens, okay? And you have two choices. You can cry and beat yourself up at how stupid you are, which is very tempting, or you can just drop it and move on to something that makes money, okay? Choose the latter. So let's forget about this and move on to something that makes money. I paid $10 for this facet typewriter that's made in Sweden with the um, vintage tray. This tray is pretty cool. It's got the drop leaf kind of thing, okay? It's aluminum there and it's got the rubber pad. You see that? Um, looking at the Facet typewriter, uh, lots of sold listings for as high as $100, and this one is in really nice condition. It doesn't have the case, but it does have a, um, a branded cover, and it's, like I said, very clean and very nice condition, so I should get really good money for that. Then, I, you know, I didn't expect the cart to do anything, but the cart, I don't know if you can see it here, actually has a brand name also, Venpi, in Chicago, Illinois. This cart has several sold listings on eBay for as high as $89 plus shipping. The cart for crying out loud, it's just a cart. But hey, for a $10 investment, 100 bucks on the typewriter, 80 bucks for the cart, yeah buddy, I'm happy there. A couple bucks for this typewriter, uh, that's a Royal Electric, that should bring me another 20. Um, you know, this cart here, I, I'm just, I, <laughs> I can't get off of that. I know I've got a couple of other carts in my stack of unlisted inventory. There's one right here. You guys see this one every time I make a video. You know, I just use this to hold stuff. Maybe I ought to look it up and sell it. Get it out of here. Good grief. So, I mean, that's a good lesson, too. You know, when when you buy stuff, you look at the stuff that comes with it. Sometimes the holders or the cases will bring more than the actual thing that you bought. Okay, another typewriter uh, inbox. Again, not new. It's used. Um, only paid $2. That should bring me $20, $25. Sony Dream Machine. This one really surprised me. Paid three bucks for this and sold listings, lots of sold listings on eBay. 25 all the way up to 45 bucks in used condition. Hooray. Bearcat Scanner paid uh, $2 for that and that will sell for 20, 25 bucks. Okay, this was a bundle, all right? And, and, and uh, auctioneers will do this too. Besides just box lots, okay, they will also, if something's not selling, they will throw other stuff with it, especially if it's uh, stuff that they think goes together. So like this is a, it's an RCA video camera, okay, Pro Wonder video camcorder in case, really nice. This is a tripod, uh, Sears tripod. And then this box is some other, you know, slide and, and stuff kind of equipment. So the auctioneer bundled all that together and I got all those for two bucks. So, look up the camera. Camera has zero sold listings, even at very, very low prices. That is junk. That'll go to Goodwill. Tripod, zero sold listings, even at low prices. That is junk. That will go to Goodwill. These things, Telecine Converter, junk, no sale. Ambico Video Camera Table Pod, who cares about that? Junk, there's listings on eBay, they are not selling. Oh, what do we have down here? Well, let's see. This is a slide projector okay it is a sawyer's rotomatic 707q sold listings on ebay 100 dollars plus shipping wow i didn't even see that when i bid on the bundle i just thought hey looks like a bunch of electronics let's check it out a hundred dollars dude on a two dollar investment that's pretty cool all right there was also an eight millimeter um projector uh, that I did not get, okay? It bid up higher than I was willing to go, but included in it was this box of home movies. So I went up to the lady and asked if she wanted the movies, and she said, no, not really. So I gave her uh, five bucks for the movies. And if you guys have seen my previous videos, over the last couple years, I've done really, really well at selling eight millimeter vacation movies. Why? Um, I found two different types of buyers. One of them is filmmakers that want to have some vintage stock for their films. And another one is just people that live in, you know, Las Vegas or, or California or wherever, and they want to see what uh, their area looked like back in the 70s or 60s, okay? This particular one here is 1966, Vacation West, uh, the Corn Palace in Iowa, the Badlands, um, 
Yellowstone National Park. There's some cool stuff there, all right? And there's some others in here that are like family Christmas and stuff like that. So that should be fun, okay? I've uh, got a couple of Polaroids here. got a Polaroid land camera with case and a Polaroid one-step with case. That should both bring me about 15 bucks. This I thought was really cute, Doll E. Layette. After I got it, and I only paid $2 for it, uh, I noticed it's missing one handle. So I don't know if I'll be able to sell that or not. But it does have some pretty cool stuff inside, all right? Got this little tea set and table, stuff like this. So I don't know. I might be able to sell that, might not. It might just go to Goodwill. Check these out! Halloween noisemakers! <laughs> Woohoo! Halloween, yay! Aren't those cool? Those are probably from the, I would guess, the 20s or 30s. This one, I'm not sure how it works. I think it may be missing something. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't really make any noise, but I will include it. Um, this will be the first thing that I list because, you know, it's mid-October right now. Um, and I did see sold listings for these for like 18 bucks for this and either 12 or 15 bucks for that, something. Uh, and again, only paid $2. Yay. Paid $2. Yeah, I'm really on the $2 thing, aren't I? For this Kirby vacuum okay and all the accessories now there is a sold listing on ebay for that kirby vacuum just the vacuum for 60 bucks let alone the accessories uh several accessories have sold listings individually for you know 15 20 bucks a piece so i think that's what i'll do instead i may try to bundle it or i may just sell the vacuum separate and then sell the accessories one by one this is a Hoover Porta Power, uh, another two dollar buy, I think, two or three dollars, something like that, and that should sell for twenty five, thirty bucks. Okay, so we talked about bundling over here. Um, these are things that the auctioneer bundled with some of these other items. Hometown chip and dip cheese tray. Nope, that's going to Goodwill. A uh, bunch of books. Looked through them. Not impressed. Going to Goodwill. Ah, uh, weird clock thing. Yeah, that's going to Goodwill. And this is some kind of pet water fresh flow thing but it's used so gross that just will go to the trash anyway my total bill at this auction was 121 dollars and you heard me say this will go for a hundred that there will go for a hundred possibly this will go for like 80 holy cow everything else is gravy leave me some comments let me know what you think tell me what you're finding in your sourcing